Hey everybody, or anybody. <laughs> I forgot to post that I was going live, not one, not two, but three times today. Today's the big day. Uh, today and Saturday are days when I cook at three and I do anti-racism check-in check -in at five and I read aloud at seven. And most days I do anti-racism check-in at three and read aloud at seven. But on Wednesday and Saturday, I gotta cook. Everybody. I wanna cook. <laughs> Ooh, that's, oh, that's me over there. Um, so, it's cooking day and I, I feel so foolish. You had one job, I say to myself. All I gotta do is sometime during the morning, earlier rather than later, I just need to post, I'm cooking today at such and such a time, since it does bounce around a little bit and it reminds you and, and whatever. Anyway, I thought of it 19 times a day, but it didn't happen until about 2.56 when I was planning to go live at 3. And since I knew I wouldn't be ready at 3, I made it 3.10 and I think I was up here by 3.12. So it's an amazing, it's an amazing day. I'm more on time with what I said. I just didn't give you much notice. So if there's anybody out there, hello! And I'm going to go ahead and make corn soup anyway, and you can watch me later. That's the wonderful thing about Facebook Live is I'm live right now, but I'll still be live to you looking at me three years hence. That's good. All right, I'm going to use my machines today to make a really simple, uh, lovely summer soup that I enjoy a lot. And I know it's hot, and I know maybe the last thing you want to make is soup, but you know what? I'm in air conditioning, and I like salad, but just eating cold food, I, I still cook. And um, I think with something like this, you cook it maybe early in the morning, get it done, and then heating it back up is very gentle. And you may even like it cold. If you add enough salt, I don't know if chilled corn soup strikes your fancy, but we enjoy it that way. But I do, I do mean it, I mean, basically it is a creamy corn soup that would be served hot. And I especially like it in the summer. Sometimes I call it Silver Queen corn soup because that's a special, super sweet, uh, it's a modern variety. It's not an old time heirloom Southern corn. It's one that came in in enough time for my grandparents to grow it on their dairy farm. And I, I remember my grandfather saying, Silver Queen. And that's because it was a big deal to him. He didn't name the, you know, the green beans or the, or the tomatoes or anything. Um, and so I think it was, I, th I think it's one of those newer people like sweet corn. We'll give them the sweet corn. But this isn't that. This is um, corn from the grocery store. I scooted out to Food Lion, which has, doesn't have quite as many, it's, it's a little more basic. And um, although you'd think that corn on, corn on the cob in the husk would be pretty basic, it's actually more of a specialty item there. Uh, so what they had for corn was these, and I, I do appreciate that it was in a um, recyclable paper sheet. It did have plastic over the top of it, and that they've left some of the um, some of the, the the wrappings, some of the husks on it because that keeps it a little bit fresher. It protects the corn just a little bit more, and you can see it's pretty. I almost always buy white corn if I have a choice. I came from people who, you know, Silver Queen is, is of course, a white corn variety. Uh, but all the corns are fine. And you know what? You could make this with frozen corn. You could make this with canned corn. So whatever corn you have, co combination yellow, white, fresh off the cob, fresh out of the freezer, it's a lovely soup for a summer day. So let's make it. Now, first thing I want to show you is the broth. So I'm going to let that cook just a tiny little bit more. Um, of course, I've got the corn here, so you might say, well, how can there be a broth if the corn is over here? But for this, I did an old, old Southern, maybe other places, cooking uh, technique that I came across while I was working on my uh, cookbook, Southern Soups and Stews, and I found in older recipes, sometimes it would say, I'm, I'm pulling the strings off over the sink so that I don't have a, uh, a long way to go with a pile of strings. Okay. So, can you see that this is both yellow and white? Isn't that pretty? So, completely forgot where I was. Corn, cool. cob. Yes, so you know how I like to not waste things. So you know how if I run water to rinse rice, I put it in a bowl and take it outside and put it on the plants. Uh, my students, some of my students do that in Thailand. My friend Betty Ann uh, Basicarino, who is uh, from the Philippines, and she's the mango queen, and she is 
uh, also the uh, award-winning, multiple award-winning um, author of Asian in America, a blog and website. And um, she, when I wrote about that one time, she said, oh my gosh, we do that in the Philippines. You, they rinse the rice, so people who really love eating rice traditionally and are Southeast Asian and also actually East Asian. Every, every Asian country that I can think of, please tell me if I've missed anybody, the ones that I know of, they wash the rice. Not because there's poison on it, but just because there's starch and because it is a cleansing thing. And so there's usually a tradition of run water over it until the water runs clear. Well, that would use up five gallons, so I never did that. Uh, but I do like to wash it, to rinse it, and then pour that water off. There's no salt in it, so I like to reuse that. So I like, I like taking the crust of bread and making breadcrumbs or croutons or bread pudding. So I like um, taking the bones from my rotisserie chicken and the skin and putting water on that and even if I only get one cup of chicken stock I like using that so you can imagine my delight when I saw that these old recipes called for using the corn cobs to make a broth and when I'm cutting the corn off a cob I like to cut it in half a little bit smaller because to me it's easier to get that corn off when I when I'm not trying to go you know the entire way down that, that's probably what everybody does, but that's just what I decided to do when I became a corn cooker. So I'm going around, I'm turning it, Oops, I'm going a little bit too deep there. Um, I want to get all corn, and it's okay if I leave a little bit in there because, because I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so I've gone around the sides, and can you see how now it's got edges? Is it, an, uh, is it octagonal? Is it hexagonal? I don't know. But now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to milk it. So Southerners like to get all that goodness. Even if you weren't going to use the cobs, well, especially if you weren't going to use the cobs, go back and rub real close and look how much more comes off, especially if you get on the points, especially if you get on the points where you made that turn going around the cob. So I'm just rubbing the sides, getting every little bit. So this is... So right here is the big kernels of corn that I knew I was going to get. And right here, I went around it again and I rubbed that knife blade along the sides and look how much I got. I got all this and this is super sweet. This is, ju this is milky. So this is actually even corn milk. So whatever you're doing with corn, be sure you go back and get that off the cob. But then even though I pulled that off, or you could say, well, I'm going to use the cobs for, for a broth. So I've got that. I'm going to put in a little container. Okay. So I've got this corn. This is extra. It's not what I need. I measured out for this recipe, so I know what you've got. So I'm going to set this aside and, of course, not waste it. Having corn cut off the cob, wonderful. You can do it after you cook it. You can do it before you cook it. Of course, in this case, since I'm going to put the corn in the soup, I'm, you know, I'm going to wait. So I've got this beautiful corn set aside, and now I've got this cob, and I'm, I would do that. This recipe called for six full ears of corn. So let me show you what I did. I put it in a big bowl, big pot. Oops. Oh, it smells so good. So I put those corn cobs in this pot, and Will, can you come show? Let me just hold this up, it's super hot. Can you see that I've got the cobs and just a little bit of juice off of them? That's enough, that's good. I'll show you the rest. And it smells so aromatic and wonderful. And I'm going to, I need to get some more tongs. I'm gonna pull out the cobs, because I don't, they've done their work. Their work here on earth is done. Boy, do I need tongs to do this. So, um, whoop! I really need tongs to do this. So I'm going to use two forks to do it and not burn myself or show off too much. Okay, so I'm determined to burn myself. Okay, so I've got that. And of course, I could put this, you know, put a colander in the sink, put something under it, don't throw the corn uh, soup away. But anyway, you get the corn cobs out and tongs are your best friend for doing that. And now, here's the bad part. I was rushing, 
And so I put this on about 45 minutes ago and I didn't turn it down. You should put it in with four cups of water and six cobs and bring it to a boil and then turn it down and just let it simmer for about 25 minutes to make a nice corn broth. And what you wanna have left is two cups of liquid. And I let it boil almost away. And so I'm gonna use this, cause I know this holds about two cups and my two cup container is busy right at this moment. So, let me just juggle it all around. Okay, so I'm gonna put my beautiful corn. I've got one cob left to cook corn on the cob. I especially love eating it off the cob, don't you? Hmm, so good. Actually, put this in its final destination, which is this bowl. All right, I've got my two hot pads, and I'm gonna pour a pretty small amount of not that, not as flavorful as it should have been, liquid. Okay. I think one thing is that I wasn't, haven't made this in a while, and so I was thinking, oh, I need a big pot. I think this would work fine in my favorite special little green pot, which is maybe three quarts. This is probably four or five quarts. So, and of course, I want that, so I'm, I'm putting those corn tidbits back in. So here's the corn broth that I've got. And you see it's got a color, it's got a little bit of cloudiness, but I really boiled away almost all of it. I, I boiled it down to where there was probably a half a cup left. So I put more water in, I just boiled this again. So this is not as flavorful as yours will be. I'm gonna, let's see, measure how much I've got. So I want two cups of corn broth. And you know what? If you were doing this with frozen corn, and I've got, I've got just a generous cup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a cup of water. If I wanted to make this um, substantial and meaty, I might add chicken stock. I might add seafood stock, but water is okay. So, so think of this as it's got water and we're gonna add milk. And if you have the corn cobs and can cook them, that gets you a little extra corn flavor, but you don't have to do this. So you could completely do this with two cups of water. And actually I realize I need to write up the recipe to make this very clear as the alternative. Suppose you're using frozen corn. You're gonna need three cups of frozen corn. You're gonna need two cups of water and you're gonna need two cups of milk. So, but since I had the corn cobs, I put them in and cooked them. And you know what? It looks like I can get just a little bit more out of here. Tablespoon maybe? Yeah. So, but I love getting the flavor out of those corn cobs. And so if you're ever making a stock and you've got corn, throw it in there. It's just gonna add a little delicate corniness. You'll taste it in this one because of course this soup is all about corn. But, okay, so we'll hold that back for a minute. And let's see, let's see who's, no, I should put it on to cook, let's see. I'll greet you in just a minute. Always get things cooking, then say hello to your guests, that's my rule. All right, so I'm gonna switch to my green pot, because now I know that's just the right size. And I don't wanna have all that surface area cooking things away. And let me see what I'm doing. So I made the stock. I cut the kernels off, six cobs, put them in the water. It covered them, rolling boil, reduce it to a simmer and cook for 25 minutes. I boiled it hard for 25 minutes and lost almost all my broth. At least it didn't burn. And then I'll make the pesto. I took them out and discarded them. I've got my two cups of corn cob stock and I'm going to add, I'm gonna put this into my new pot. Don't switch pots, I'm just doing that because I started off with one that turned out to be bigger than I need. Okay, so I would put this, uh, put this, strain out the cobs. I've got my two cups of broth. I'm gonna add two cups of milk. I'm just using whole milk. You could use almond milk, you could use soy milk, you could use coconut milk. If you use coconut milk from a can, I would thin it down. My, my idea here is that it'll be the texture of whole milk. And you're gonna get, you're gonna get more texture from the corn. So if you wanted to use cream, you could use that. If you wanted to use straight up coconut milk, it's just gonna be richer and more creamy. That's absolutely fine. But my idea is, uh, is milk with the texture of whole milk. Okay, and of course you could use more, a lighter version of it as well. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm gonna put the corn, so add the milk, I did, the salt and pepper, I've got a teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of freshly ground pepper because I've got a good pepper grinder. Um, if, you, if you use pepper already ground, 
just make sure that you don't keep one container for five years. I think that's that's a bad thing. We maybe tend not to use it a lot. And because it's already ground, it will degrade. So if you've got a, a, a container of pepper that you're measuring out and you know that it's more than six months or a year old, definitely take it out in the yard, sprinkle it on the earth and thank the earth for all the good things the earth gives us and buy yourself a new container of pepper or grind it yourself. Either one is fine. Okay. So I've got the milk in and I've got the salt and pepper in and I'm going to add the corn. And of course I've also got the, oh, that's so pretty. Will, can you, I put the pepper on. Look how the pepper created a, a beautiful yin yang kind of thing happening. Lovely. It'll melt in. I'm putting in my three cups of corn and oh, now look, see all that goodness there. I am going to add, I added a tiny bit more water because I do not want to leave that corn. See how corny that's getting? I do not want to leave that behind on the cutting room floor for you. Okay, so this is gonna go on and boil. And there it goes. This I'm gonna let come up really, really high. Remind me to check it. And I'm actually gonna put this in. This is one that I, did for you and i'll pull that out of course before we eat it because that would not be tasty so i've got raw corn and one half of a corn on the of a cob of corn and this so that's enough for another a whole corn experience that will go in the fridge covered up to be continued more corn okay that is happening let me greet you and then let me make the pesto and we're almost done elizabeth welcome i'm so glad you're here I enjoyed your, your, what you posted this morning. Athena, always a pleasure. I hope you're doing well. Lori, good to see you. Always. Grayson, I'm glad you're here. Betty Ann, that corn looks good. It is. I just, I love the, I love the multicoloredness of it. Isn't that beautiful? Yep. Okay, Tracy, I'm so glad that you're here. And so Tracy had to work this morning and now she's, getting into the corn that's good if, if you if you must cook today this is a pretty easy thing to do so i'm glad you're with us and betty ann is here she said i use the second rice wash to add to broths in filipino cooking of course because it's got starch it's got richness right so that body using it for flavor that she said i just cooked corn soup corn soup with shrimp and spinach and she used her second rice wash i love it you know i never think about using it for cooking Right. Of course. I like that. And that reminds me, people, when uh, I got to go to Xi'an in western China, ancient, ancient city, one of the old, old capitals, and it has to this day a magnificent Muslim market by Chinese Muslims, uh, that I believe the largest mosque in China, or the, no, the oldest mosque in China is in Xi'an. And you can tour it. It's beautiful. It it looks it is Chinese style architecture because of course you know there they were, uh, but um, it is it's magnificent. The market is incredible. The food is amazing. And uh, while we were there, uh, one of the big dishes that you want to eat there, made in the marketplaces, is belt noodles. And this is people take uh, flour. I'm pretty sure that it's wheat flour. And of course you're in Northwestern China, so wheat flour and dumplings and noodles and all those things are, are much more common than they would be down in uh, Guangdong, the, you know, the southernmost areas. But it is a very supple wheat noodle, I believe it has egg in it, and the, it is rolled out and it's tender, and then when you order it, one of the vendors takes a little piece and starts flapping it, shaking it up and down and stretching it out into one gigantic, like it's kind of like a lasagna noodle so it's like at that tall and rounded at the ends kind of like a belt and that is cooked to order that you order they make that they drop that into a boiling pot where all the noodles are cooked all the all evening long that's your noodle they pull that back out they put it in a bowl with the seasonings and it is served just the noodle hot in the bowl with all the seasonings and herbs and everything on it and on the side you get a little bowl about that size of noodle water and that came and I thought well it doesn't have any seasoning and I realized oh my gosh you're not gonna waste that it's got flour in it it's got substance it it's hot and having that as a digestif 
and using up that, that you know, when, when every bite counts, when you're living in a cold area, I, I just, I was, I'm so fascinated by, by humanity. It's wonderful. Okay, Nelson is here. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Th Therese, always a pleasure. I'm just so honored. I know you're, you are too busy to be here, and yet, here you are. I'm so honored. Uh, and Karen, welcome. Glad you're here. Stacy, good to see you. Jonathan, are you ready for Lion Boy tonight? We're finishing up. I'm gonna, we're going all the way tonight. We're going to finish up that book. Claudia, watching while she cooks. Helen, hello. How are you? So good to see you. Hope you're doing well. And Athena, all right. Wonderful. Okay, traveling. People traveling. All right, so let me get this pest, simple pesto ready. So I've got the food processor ready to uh, buzz up. Well, let me check. It has not quite... So funny, I boiled, I boiled it off to pieces and almost lost all my broth earlier. And now when I watch pot, you know, I want it to come to a boil. It's just kind of going, I don't know, maybe it will, it will come to a boil. Okay, so I'm going to push the food processor back because first I'm going to use the blender. Whoops. And get that here. Okay, so I'm going to make a teeny tiny amount of pesto. I'm putting in one cup of basil leaves and I'm just, you know, just to make sure that everything... Shreds up pretty easy, easily. Never cut basil till the very last minute. And of course, if you have a mortar and pestle and like to make basil that way, that's the traditional way it's called pesto because it's pounded, it's a paste. We're buzzing it up because that's a simple, shortcut, quick way to do it. Um, that will have the most flavor and texture of all, but I wouldn't cut it up until the very last minute. I've got a couple of little stems, and you know, I put those in. They have a little flavor and texture. That's okay. I've got two teaspoons of garlic. I chopped it up pretty finely, even though I'm putting it in here. I've got, oops, one more basil leaf. I've got, and so I wanted to show you the garlic. Let's see, let me put this up here so you can see what's happening. Okay, and I need a quarter cup of oil now. So if we're measuring liquid things, you want to use, the ideal thing to use is a measuring cup with a pouring spout. And you're going to check it by looking sideways so that you can see. So this is a liquid measure, handle, spout. Here's my handle, here's my spout. And this is a dry measure. So when I'm measuring flour, I'm going to want to fluff up the flour, scoop it in till it's a mountain sweep it away across the top and I'll have just exactly the right amount. So I can measure my quarter cup of oil into here, but it I am likely to spill it. So since I've got this nice one, that's you can use a dry for wet, you can use a wet for dry, but there is a there's an intention and if you have both, that's why there's two kinds in case you ever wondered. And I had, can you believe it, exactly what I wanted, a quarter cup. A beautiful when you see that beautiful green color I like olive oil that is super flavorful and the color kind of shows that okay let's see oh and I needed a little bit of um, I'm using walnuts I think in the recipe I said you can use peanuts walnuts pecans I gave you the choice of peanuts or pecans and here I am using walnuts and almonds work fine. And how about pine nuts, most traditional? Any nut, just a nut that will be um, useful. And of course, if you are allergic to tree nuts, use peanuts because they are actually, they grow on a bush in the ground. So peanuts, if you want that nutty texture, use the nut that's not really a nut. Peanuts are really a bean. I assume you're in the bean family. Okay, that's coarsely chopped. I think I wanted two tablespoons, is that right? Back and forth, back and forth. I'll find it. Yes, two tablespoons, all right. So that's one, and that is almost two. And you know what, I'm gonna throw in the little pieces and also get every bit of this that I couldn't quite pick up. And there we go. Okay, let's see if this will go. There may not be enough liquid in there because it's a small amount, but we're going to give it a try. I didn't have this blender when I was nice. Okay, I'm going to disturb my president over here and grab one of these. Of course, the lid's off. It won't turn on. Be super careful when working with the electrical entities. I'm 
just pushing everything down from the sides and I'm moving the blades just a little bit to keep going. Now, of course, this can be, this can be, um, I think that may be just what we need. I still see some fairly substantial garlicky bits. And so, of course, if you're not crazy about garlic, you could always crush that up separately or chop it really finely. Or you may have a little tiny grinder. I mean, this, this is going to be under a half cup, so you may have a little uh, a mini food processor or uh, some kind of unit that makes that easier to work with. Okay, let's pour this out. See if it'll fit into this bowl. And of course, I'm going to switch to the food processor for doing the corn soup because it's got a bigger capacity. But if you only have a blender, you can do the whole thing. You can do the corn soup in the blender. You'll just have to do it in batches. So maybe you do a third, a third, a third. And for the corn soup, help me remember, you don't want to blend up all of it. You're going to blend up all but a cup. But I ask, and of course you can blend up the whole thing if you want to, but I like it to have some texture. So I blend up two thirds of the cooked corn and then leave about a cup of it whole so that I've got corny texture along with the creaminess. I'll come back and get the rest of that out. But you can see here, look at this beautiful, look at this beautiful, beautifulness. Whoop! Get a spoon, you can see, yes. And see how nice and rich that is. It's a little bit chunky. Got some chunks of walnut and some chunks of garlic. There you go. If you wanted this to be very fine, you could press this through a, um, a fine mesh strainer. And then you would have the nuts and the garlic left. You could add that to a stir fry. And then you could have a really creamy pesto if you didn't want to encounter an actual chunk of garlic in your soup. Okay, so we've got that ready. We need... Oh, let's see, I think I said a cup and a half of cherry tomatoes cut into quarters. And today I think, what was I thinking? That's tiny. I think halves is nice. See, sometimes I write a recipe and later I come back and say, why did she say that? Oh, no, wait, it was me. <laughs> so that's the good thing about cooking for yourself. You can change your mind even if it's your own recipe. And you can certainly change your mind if you can change somebody else's mind if it's their recipe. Well, you didn't change their mind, but you can say, I like to X. I always why you know that's the thing that's that's part of the joy of cooking and I hope you have the new joy of cooking which came out last year the I believe it's a grandson or close family member of the um, uh, Irma Rombauer who wrote the original book that family still has that book and the, uh, the younger generation it's young delightful couple who are food people, they love to eat, they love the food of the world, they traveled all around, and they published a new edition that is, even if you have the old one, I think it's, it's very special to have it. It's a great one. So that name, The Joy of Cooking, yeah, that's, that's a reason I do it. I think that's going to be enough for me here. Let's see, I'll just, I'll put them in this just so that they're contained for this moment. And let's check on the soup. Oh my goodness, it's puffing up. And I left my hot pot holders here. Let's see if this will, can you see, can you see, can you see? Look, it came almost to the top. <laughs> I've got a lacy net. Can you see the lacy net of corn? Oh my gosh, the aroma is magnificent. Can you see that? Can you hear that? Storm's coming up. Now it's soup weather. It's like the universe said, okay, you want to make soup? I'll make it. I'll make it soup weather. No? Okay. I guess that's thinking a little bit too much of myself. But hey, the weather can change, so be prepared. All right, so I am scraping that foam right off the sides and back into the soup because that is, you know, if, if you're cooking meat, sometimes foam rises up and you want to, get, you want to scoop it off, but this is corn foam. <laughs> This is corn, corn kernels, corn milk, and I want every bit of that. So I scooped that right back in. I am going to take out, boy, you know, I thought, I thought I had a history of picking up corn cobs just by sticking a fork in them, but not today, buddy. Let's see. Oh, and I just, I just got a little pesto in here. Hope that's going to be all right. Come on. Okay. 
Well, that was exhausting. So I'm gonna milk this, get every bit. What did I do with my recycle? That's going to the compost. And three years from now, it will still be a visible corn cob. But I think animals like to eat it and you can always set that aside when you're using your compost. Or if you're a better composter than me, maybe it does dissolve. Okay, so I've now got the corn. See, this is full of corn that's not dissolved. And now is where I want to grind it up all except about a cup. So I'm gonna reach, could they hear that? Yeah, okay. Ooh, I better finish up the soup. We may lose power. No. So I'm pulling out, that's not quite a cup, but I think that's all I'm gonna pull out for now. I've got more corn that I can put back in. And I wanna make sure we've got enough to show you how this is done. Sorry, oops. Uh-oh, look what came off. That might be a foot of a blender. Hmm. Most people don't carry their blender all around the kitchen and move it from right to left and east to west, do they, Will? I'm hard on things. Well, I didn't mean you, but Will is nodding. I like the soup, though. If you, wanted to, if you like shrimp and you wanted to cook shrimp and float those on the top, that would be wonderful, or serve them on the side on skewers. That would be fun. Okay, this is my wonderful food processor. It's a Breville, and it is going to enjoy being tasked with this task of grinding up. You know, I almost think that I could do this entire batch, but since I'm not 100% sure, I'm not gonna chance it. If there, were, if there were too much, then it could spurt out and give you kind of a mess. So I'm just gonna do it in small batches since you're watching. Okay, so, and I've got my, this has a, there's a hole, there's a, a, a pusher to push things down in. I'm just going to put something over the top just in case, because it's hot, sometimes there'll be pressure and things can blow up, can not blow up, but it can, you know, make the top rise. So there we go. I've got little tiny drips coming out and I'm switching to pulse. I'm pulsing. You don't need to get it perfectly smooth. So that is fine. Let's see how that looks. It looks, it looks, thin and not as creamy as I would like it to look. I may put all that corn back in because I want this to have a nice texture. And you know what? I think this is not too much for the entire one. Let's do this so you know. This is a you know good size, full size food processor, of course. That is the corn. And let's put this lid back on. Fit it in. These things are made so that they're not supposed to start unless everything is properly in place. And I've had good luck with it. So you see how that is rising up? I'm getting little bits buzzing out. That's more. Probably about three cups is what you should put in, and this is four. So we've got it there. All right, so. And let's pour this into my bowl. The bowl that had the corn cobs in it. That's appropriate. And we'll put that here. And it's nice and chunky. If you wanted it to be super creamy, just use cream. Okay. And if you want it to be more corny, you could add corn. It won't hurt. You've got plenty of liquid. Always just check the salt. You know, if you're altering ingredients in terms of their quantities, I'm just gonna use this as a, as a cleaning towel and give it a wash sooner rather than later. Okay, so we've now got this and I'm gonna stir it up. And it's got a very milky texture. It's not super creamy. I'm gonna put this much corn back in so that everybody gets a little bit of corny crunch. I think I'm, I think I'm gonna change this recipe to eight to eight ears and four cups of corn because I want it, this is fine, but you just can't be too corny for me. Oh, and I think I will also test it just for salt. Mm. Mm, but a little more salt, it's very sweet. 
Oh. Salt was hiding behind the pepper. I'm going to use this little. So I'm going to say I added a half teaspoon. And not that spoon. Stir it up again. There we are. Okay. And I've got my tomatoes here. And I'm going to take a few of the tomatoes and mix them with some of the pesto. And toss those together just to coat them, give them a little bit of interest, which rhymes with Pinterest. <laughs> okay, and I would serve this with tomato sandwiches, serve it with shrimp from the grill, or serve it with a big plate of something like quinoa with all with beans and garbanzo beans and herbs and vegetables in it, or some kind of you know grain-based dinner this would be a this would be a wonderful uh vegan if you want it to be vegan of course you're going to use almond milk or soy milk or another kind of milk but other than that it's everything is vegan and i'm going to put it in these two bowls all right so i've got a nice pretty red bowl and i'm going to do that oops i'm making splashes and this would be wonderful with avocado toast delicious and yeah I think I want to use a fork so I'm just gonna set a few of the okay now I think I know why I said to quarter them because I like them I mean you can just stir them in and have them be all throughout it but I like to have a few on the top so I'm putting in right many aren't I but that way it makes it easy for them to stay on the top and show up show up show off and I'm going to add just a little bit of pesto. You could also put a drip or two of beautiful olive oil on there. Will, can you see that? Oh, yes. You can see it already? Okay. There you go. So I put, there probably, there's a nice bunch of tomatoes in there, enough that you can stack some on top. And then I put a little extra pesto. So that's one way to do it. And I'm going to give that one to Will to try out. Let's see if I've got my, yes got our good ceramic Chinese soup spoon, which is designed to, it sits on a table and it's cool to the touch so that when you're eating hot soup, the spoon will keep, the, the soup will stay hot, but it won't burn your tongue. Isn't that genius? Genius of Chinese cuisine and food and history. Okay, so going off the side and I was gonna swoop it in under them, but that's okay. And now another one, and here's a little, a nice little bowl. This is going to keep in the fridge, covered up, four days, easy. It would freeze pretty well too. If you freeze it, I would. Uh, if you freeze it, I would buzz the entire uh, mixture. Like suppose you had the big pieces, I would buzz it all up and then add more if you wanted to. But if you've frozen it, you want everything to have the same texture. And having frozen the texture of the corn, the whole corn won't be as wonderful as it is now. So there we go. And just looking at it, I'm thinking I love pepper, and I think corn and pepper are a really good marriage. So I think I would add some pepper. I might even add chopped parsley or char charped, <laughs> chopped cilantro. Just, there are just so many things you could do. Okay, so now I've got this one. This is mine. And I'm going to add a couple more. You know what? I'm going to quarter a couple of these and just see... Who knows where the knife goes? Cutting that one small and small and small. And see if those are more floatable. Not really. They sink down. So we're putting in enough tomatoes that a couple will balance on the top. There we go. There's a whoop. There's a big beauty. And one more over here. Oops. I keep leaving them down too hard. Okay, and now a little bit more of the lovely basil -y olive oil swirl. Swirl, 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 drip, drop, drip, drop. Lovely. Okay, and that is mine. And that's corn soup with cilantro, basil, pesto. And of course, you pass that. You bring some of the cherry tomatoes in the pesto to the table and then you pass that around along with, oh, I don't know, croutons, avocado toast, as I said, and people can add some more of that to their soup. And that is 
That is corn soup, fresh corn soup. Easy peasy. And I'm saying add more corn. If you wanted it to be sort of more like a vichyssoise, you could just put some peeled potatoes in there and that'll give it that creamy potato soup texture. It will take away a little bit of the corning, it, then it'll be potato soup with corn. I love this because it is so super corny. That's what I want at this time of the summer. It's a way to use up a lot of corn and as I said, use up those cobs. Okay, let's see, Faye. My grandmother would scrape the cob with the back of her knife. Yes, yes, I should have known that. So, well, even if it were a sharp knife. So I've got the cob and so I'm, my friend Faye is up in Wisconsin now, but Miss Faye, do you have Southern roots? Was this a Southern lady or was this, is this a Wisconsin story? So instead of using the side that I used to chop, now I'm using the dull side and scraping and pushing down and really milking it, getting every bit. You gotta really have some traction there. You gotta really press and hold it steady and get all that goodness. And it is creamy. It is, and you see that and you think, wow, if I didn't do that, think of what we would have lost. Got that creamy goodness there. Use the back of the knife, whether it's a sharp knife or a butter knife. Use that dull side because you wanna have that, you're not trying to cut it out, you're trying to milk it out. You're trying to tease it out. I love knowing that. There would be so much milk from the cob, she would add that to whatever dish she was making, usually fried corn, oh so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, Faye, I'm gonna want you to tell me about that fried corn. I think we need to write that recipe up. That's so moving. Not wasting anything. It's like, you know, here's their, it's like, that's not trash. That's not trash yet. There's still good food in that we're gonna be thankful for and make use of everything that the universe gives us. And especially people now, I, I hope you've seen news from California, how, how hard hit by COVID-19 people in agriculture are. So people who have come here making a living for their family on harvesting crops for you and me to eat are being struck down. We've got to do better than this. We've let a system become sick where it's great for some like me and so hard for others. And it doesn't have to be that way. We just have to not be greedy. Gary, welcome. I'm looking forward to the concert tomorrow. My friend Gary Stanford is a, um, uh, a singer and musician and actor and director and uh, going to be part of a jazz concert tomorrow night, live online to lift our spirits while we're going through these times. I look forward to that. Tracy, legume, legume, legume. Beans, <laughs> I said beans. Peanuts are a legume. Thank you very much. They're not a nut, they're a legume. Nancy, welcome, the uh, Uncomplicated Gourmet, putting those cool videos out, helping us cook through pandemic time. Not much fuss, not much effort, just the few smart things you need to do to make doable food. I love it. Colleen, my darling cousin, how are you? I'm thinking of you, wonderful children, grandchildren, your whole family. I wanna see you guys. So once, we, once it's travel time, I'm coming out there. And y'all, please come here. That'd be wonderful. Okay, Patty. Oh my gosh, Patty, I'm so glad you're here. I've been thinking about you and send you love and I love that collage that you made. It's so moving, so beautiful. All right, Tracy. Immersion blender, thank you. I don't have one and therefore I never tell anybody about them. So imagine the soup back in here and you have an immersion blender. You just put it right down inside and everything is done. No food processor, no blender. Immersion blender, absolutely perfect. Do all the corn. I, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking don't, don't hold any corn back. Blend up all the corn that you made. And if you want more corn, you don't even have to cook it separately. You know, you could heat this up, put that uncooked corn in and give it two or three minutes and that would be enough. You know, corn isn't gonna hurt us. We, we could eat it raw, we usually don't. But that could just heat back up when you heat up the soup to serve. That's a wonderful idea. Thank you very much, Immersion Blender, yes. Catherine, welcome, I'm glad you're here. And Tracy, my mom made corn fritters, almost forgot about them. You know, you start, you make one thing, do something with cucumbers, do something with eggplant, do something with, somebody said today on, online, it's like, oh, I got, a, I got a bushel of peaches, what should I make? Somebody said, peach chutney, peach cobbler, oh, I make peach fritters. 
actually I do have a peach fritters recipe. I need to tell her that. Okay, people, that's it. But I didn't try it. Wait just a darn minute. Using every spoon in the house. And then another one. I have my wonderful spoons that my friend Howard, who was in Thailand with me in Peace Corps, sent me. These are metal spoons. It's that Chinese style soup spoon, but this is made out of metal because of course in Thailand they're eating curries and things and the weather's usually hot, so they're not so worried about the soup staying hot. They're using this for all kinds of things that have sauces, not just soups. Okay, so we'll, I'm going in. Oh, it's so good. It is essence of corn. I wouldn't call it cream of corn because that's gonna suggest something more creamy but it is delicious, and I, I think the pesto combination, and of course, if you already have pesto, you don't need to do this. I'm just telling you, here's, here's a small amount of pesto that you can make for this. You could leave this off. You, if you have salsa, just make a delicious pico de gallo. Um, you could chop up avocados. You start thinking about what would be good on this, you will use up a whole page. This would be good for Tim Tyson's corn party. Oh, and we have a good friend who grows corn every summer in the side yard with a buddy and they go out and talk to it and sing to it and read poetry to it and have a big corn party and everybody brings food made with corn. Right there. Okay, people, thank you for spending time with me. Can you see? <laughs> it's amazing. It's just, it's turned so, so, so dramatic out there. It hasn't rained yet, but sure looks like it's fixing to. Okay, I'm going to be back at five o'clock to in one hour after I, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Will is so great. So yesterday afternoon, maybe some of you joined me, I did an unboxing and my friend, I was involved with a wonderful um, event called Bakers Against Racism, which happened about three, it was in June. So I think it was like mid to late June. I think June 20th, 21st was the day, the big bake sale day. Paula Velez and two other bakers, Paula Velez is in Washington, D.C had done a fundraiser bake sale for a cause involving immigrants, immigration. And after George Floyd was murdered, they were so concerned that Black Lives Matter, but we don't act like it. And what could they do for uh, groups that are working toward the goals of making it not controversial to say Black Lives Matter, because it'll just be true. Uh, people get upset now because they know it's, not, it's true that Black Lives Matter but we are living and running this country in a way that says anything but that. And that's why people get so upset when you say it, because they go, la, 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 that's not true, that's true. It's like, yeah, well, what about me? <laughs> I digress. Anyway, they thought of this and set it up. They gave the information out how to set up a bake sale in your town. And my friend, uh, Catherine Highsmith, and her friend, who is involved with World in a Pocket, which is an incredible website about wrapped entities like dumplings and fried pies and all things that are folded up food of the world and you know culture food and culture they did all the hard part so that our area could do a bake sale our local area raised five thousand dollars the worldwide proceeds of this event were two million dollars worldwide there were all kinds of different events uh, most were probably organized like somebody in my area said I did some cooking, somebody else did some donating to good causes for uh, anti-racism causes, and the people who donated the money got to eat the food, and the good anti-racism causes got to have more funds to do their good work, and we who like to bake got to bake and feel good about being part of those two other things, and here we are. And my friend, uh, my friend Cassandra Laughlin did this. She made this card for people who ordered one of her pound cakes. Her grandmother makes a famous lemon pound cake, and so she said, I will, my grandmother and I will make pound cakes. You send the money here, it'll go to a good anti-racism cause, and I will mail them out over time. And mine came yesterday, and I did an unboxing. So here it is, half of it's gone. I gotta, I gotta get out of here and go give some of this away. Universe says yes. I could personally eat the entire thing, but I need to not do that, so I'm going to share it. But this is Cassandra Loftlin, L-O-F-T-L-I-N, and you should follow her anywhere and everywhere. She's fabulous. And this cake, it looks like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
whew, thank goodness, we haven't eaten half the cake. <laughs> we've eaten all but this amount, so we've probably eaten a fourth of the cake. There's only two people, and one of the two people isn't all that fond of sweets, so it's, it's really me. Okay, so hooray for my friend Cassandra Loftlin, and you should look her up at Chef Cassandra Loftlin, L-O-F-T-L-I-N, and at ARK Republic, A-R-K Republic, is a great cause. I'll be doing anti-racism check-in at five right here, and I'll be doing reading aloud. We're going to finish up the book Lion Boy tonight. We're going all the way. We're going to the end. Thank you so much for joining me. The recipe is already posted in the comments, and I will make a recipe with a picture on it ASAP. I'm thrilled to have spent this time with you. Um, it means a lot to connect. There's so much going on. My heart gets heavy, and then I look around and I say, oh my gosh, look what people are doing. There's so many people, not as loud and not as well covered, but there's so much goodness going on, and you, my friends, are part of it, and I'm grateful to be connected here. Okay, see you. See you soon. <laughs> the soup is... Golly, if the, well, if the power goes out, we've got a big pot of soup. Isn't that a good feeling? Okay, bye everybody. Lots of love. I need some soup.